Hi Apartment Therapy, welcome to my 400 square foot apartment in Brooklyn. When you first walk into the space, I think the big thing you see is color. I wanted you to feel like joyful, happy, and I really wanted this space to spark creativity for me. The two biggest struggles I had with this space were number one, the lack of natural lighting in the living room, and the second is the layout of the living room. So I knew I really wanted to work with a professional to help me fix that. I knew Kendra because Kendra and I go to the same church, but she had done one of our other mutual friends' apartment. When I first walked into the space, the first thing that popped out at me was the fact that this space felt very dark and dreary. Originally, this apartment was covered in gray walls yes. and black trim. So we had to brighten it up yeah. and we painted the walls in a beautiful crisp white. It only had the recessed lighting in the ceiling. So I had my guys come in and they added the light fixture here. One thing I will say is if you are a renter like me and you want to add overhead lighting, just consult your landlord. You need to know Know what type of ceiling you have, what the materials in there are, because the electrician and who's doing this will ask. So consult your landlord first, but most are okay with these changes if you're willing to reverse them. So when I first started thinking about layout and space planning, I wanted to really think about what was Jasmine going to be doing in the space, mm -hmm. right? And Jasmine is a, she is a chic woman. She <laughs> You are, you are. Thanks, friend. Um, she loves to host and community is super important for her. So I wanted to make sure that the space was one, inviting, two, it had plenty of seating for everyone that she wanted to have a cocktail with. And then lastly, I wanted to create special little nooks in the space. In order to do that, I wanted the sofa to be the main event. Put the sofa in the middle of the room and it has dual purpose. It creates this barrier to make it feel warm and cozy in the living room, while it also creates a barrier for the kitchen area. A quick tip is to map out your furniture by using painter's tape. Mm -hmm. Jasmine and I spent many hours <laughs> mapping out each piece of furniture mm -hmm. in here mm -hmm. to make sure that it was at scale and that we wouldn't have a hard time getting it through this door. So Kendra created three spaces for me is kind of how I feel the vibe is. The first is this dining space. This is where I eat and have a little moment with my friends. Then we lounge in the center. It's basically everything on this rug, the couch, the chair, it's a little moment. Mm -hmm. Then over here, this is where we entertain. What really drew me to this beauty of a credenza over here was the beautiful sliding doors. Come, can we get a drum roll, please? Look at the drama, the drama. And so, <laughs> so I just was like, we could have a brandy, and then on the other side, how about Brandon Blackwoods, okay? I, <laughs> it was absolutely perfect for Jasmine to store her purses on one end and have her beautiful glassware on this side. When thinking about inspiration for Jasmine's, I really gravitated toward Nadine Idurari's work. Her photography was the impetus to the color scheme of this place, along with my constant observation of Jasmine and her fabulous style. Everywhere you look, it is a, a nice nod to black artistry and beauty. One big indulgence that I had was wanting to commission this big piece here. One day I was scrolling TikTok, as you do, and I stumbled across this artist, Trisha Abe, and her work just moved me. And I feel like that's what I love out of artwork. So I commissioned this huge piece from her, and the pinks and orange really helped to inform some of the other like big colors that we played with in the space. So in this dining nook area, there's a lot of really special things going on. First thing I want to mention is these chairs. These were found on Facebook Marketplace, but we had them reupholstered with fabric from Mood Fabric, so that's always something you can do if you want to add a little pop, a little razzle dazzle in your space. The other really big anchor piece is this beautiful pink banquette. 
What's really cool about this is this is like something that you could do at home. The bottom part of it has storage and it's the IKEA Vesta storage system. And then this top part, it's kind of like making a headboard similar to the DIYs of headboards that people make and a big cushion. So we had a lot of investment pieces when it came to the artwork. So when it came to the banquette, I knew I had to save a couple of dollars. So I went to my best friend Pinterest and I came up with the idea to add a little color by using construction paper and framing it and it came out beautifully. Since there's a lot of color going on in the living room, I wanted the bedroom to be a place of serenity. She already had purchased her bed when she first moved in and the bed was a great find because it has storage underneath for her clothes. I came across this beautiful wallpaper by Milton and King and it was exactly what I was looking for. I mean, it created a bit of an oasis. It was tropical, but yet it did not overpower the space. It still created a sense of peace and calmness. In order for us to save some coins, I asked Jasmine to sew the pillow for us. When I was thinking about the window treatments, I wanted to just create more of a layering effect. So we installed a double curtain rod and that allowed me to add the sheer curtains here as well as the beautiful velvet curtains to flank the dresser. And one of the biggest concerns was to make sure we didn't have any peeping toms. So in order to prevent that, I added blackout curtains on the opposite side of the velvet curtains so Jasmine could close them and have a bit of privacy. One thing that was really important to me was that the dresser seemed like a continued surface coming from the window and so making sure it was the exact height. It also acts as a beautiful vanity to showcase all of her perfumes and her jewelry collection. To avoid the room feeling flat, I also used a ton of different materials. So we have the jute rug here, the weaving in the laundry basket. We have the velvet in the curtains and cashmere on the bed. And also the brass was another star in the room. She really loves her grandmother. And so I thought that was really important to have a sense of home in her bedroom. So this is the second bedroom. I use this as my office and sewing space. And this is really the only room I did without Kendra's help. I love that I worked with Kendra because I used a lot of learnings that I got from her in this space. First one I would say too is lighting. So as you know, we changed the lighting fixtures in every other room. So we changed this one immediately. It was that black chain before. Now we have this really cool bulb from Hay. This is a room that I am creating in because I do sew and I love to create my own clothing. So I wanted this room to also, like the living room, inspire me, spark inspiration, spark joy. So we have this whole collage over here with my vision board in the middle, images and things that inspire me around it. And then this gallery wall that I created of just images that really moved me. Thing about me, I have really bad allergies, but I love the look of flowers. So these are actually just some beautiful faux flowers that I found off of Amazon. I think faux flowers are a great investment and a way to just add a pop of color into a room with ease and they're in my whole apartment. And the other thing I love about this space is I have a balcony. And this is something that you don't have in so many spaces in Brooklyn. I am so grateful for this. So I definitely will be taking advantage of this and setting up a cute little situation out here. So this is my sewing storage. So what's great about this piece, which I got from CB2, is it holds all of my fabrics. So a lot of these things are fabrics that I got from thrift stores or clothing that people didn't want anymore that they passed on to me to sew into something new. So the other side of the room is all basically my sewing side of the room. So this is my sewing desk where I sit and do everything. 
But one thing that I did on this side of the room that I really was happy about and also inspired by something Kendra taught me is changing things when you buy them. So I bought these pegboards from Ikea, but they were actually white. And so I painted them pink because I knew I wanted them to pop off of this wall. And even though I had this pink chair, I felt like I needed a little bit more of a statement over here. So I feel like this pink paint on the white pegboards was the perfect way to kind of solidify this piece. So there's a little bit of a quirk in this apartment and it's right here. We have this glass window and then it turns into blinds and it just covers me. And it's like a little peekaboo. Hi. Okay. <laughs> this is the bathroom. This bathroom is grown and sexy to me, honestly. There are multiple light switches in it. There are two different light settings. There's even a switch that heats up the bathroom, y'all. You don't get that in Brooklyn, so you don't have to get out the shower and be cold. You can be nice and toasty. So I love it in here. It's definitely like a hint of luxury for me in this bathroom. This is the kitchen. I do meal prep every week, so I love that I have this space. I do wish I had a little bit more countertop space, but I still love the kitchen. It's modern, stainless steel, and I love her. So this is the entryway. I think this space is just so nice because you don't find this in Brooklyn. It's a little stop where you can put your shoes, your coat, check your face before you walk out the door. And I just love that I have this before somebody steps into my home. So we've been working on this space together for a year and I think there are some things that are worth noting about working with the interior designer. Mm -hmm. You have to be open yes. because interior designers are not mind readers. Yeah. They can't just guess what you want your home to be. They can't guess who you are. Mm -hmm. Also, patience is key. Yes. It's not that it took Kendra a year to source things, for example. Mm -hmm. Furniture takes time, y'all. You challenged me, you pushed mm -hmm. me because my style is more classic. Yeah. You were like, Kendra, I want more color. Like, yeah. this is not enough color. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really, you, you, you want to go there? Yeah. I can take us there. For a lot of life, I feel like I may have just kind of subdued a part of me. But during COVID especially, I felt like I really refound who I was and it's really expressive, it's really colorful. In expressing a home, it helped me understand the expression of myself. 